So have you ever wondered how to easily create stylized lighting effects in Unreal Engine? Well, look no further because here at VFX we just released Zap VFX and this is a pack that will allow you to easily have lighting into your game. Obviously stylized lighting because realistic lighting is super boring. So let's open up the Zap VFX folder and inside here we'll find maps and Zap selector. Once you've opened the Zap Selector map, you'll find the BP Zap Selector blueprint, which is a blueprint that is intended just for demo purposes, and it's not intended to be a production-ready blueprint, but you'll be able to switch between different sound effects types and lighting types. So if you press the G key on the B-board, you'll be able to remove the gizmo here to better see the effects, and then press the Zap button. So you'll see a red lighting strike happening. If you switch the lighting type to 2, you'll see that it turns to a blue one, then a yellow one, a green one, a purple one, a white one, and a black lighting, which is pretty cool because it's an accent color that has been used in multiple games such as League of Legends or Genshin Impact, you name it. And then lighting type 8 is gonna make it so it's a random lighting each time you press a button, which is, you know, cool. Then we've got the SFX type, which is just the sound effects. So let's try number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5. SFX type 6 is just gonna play a random SFX and lighting type 8 is just gonna play a random lighting type. So now if I spam the zap button, it's just gonna spawn some different lighting types each time. Let's create our own zap BFX. To easily do that, you can come here to the NS zap 6 white version of the lighting and then just duplicate that and rename it to something like zap 10 custom. And then you can press Ctrl Shift S to save all and then drag and drop the Niagara system into the scene. Access the details panel and here you'll find a bunch of parameters for you to tweak and adjust to your own liking. To replay the effect, you have to use the auto activate button so you can use it like that to replay the effect. And if you're still seeing the gizmo there, feel free to press G again on the keyboard to remove that. So the parameters go as follows. Floor impact is just a, an impact effect sprite that happens at the floor level. Then the floor scorch is that mark that happens in the ground, uh, which is just the aftermath of the burning of the lighting on collision with the floor. Related to that, you have the floor scorch lifetime, which makes it so it lasts longer or it's super short in that sense. Then you can activate the lighting background, which is a super slight secondary version of the lighting that you can see if I crank up this value here, the lighting background alpha, uh, which is great because it gives that secondary read and you can also like tweak the colors here. So let's say, for example, you want it to be like blue. You can adjust its intensity, so it's kind of bright, but I wouldn't recommend that. You can also scale it both horizontally and vertically too. Then there's the lighting color. So let's make it, I don't know, like a purple-ish type of lighting, like Genshin Impact. Yeah, really like that. And now if I crank up the lighting background alpha, I want to make it a different color. So for example, this red that becomes, you know, dark purple. And it's pretty neat, pretty great as a secondary read. Uh, let's switch this to be like pink. So yeah, you, you can feel like the fantasy color is happening right now. And as you can see, it's super easy to tweak. You can also adjust the lifetime maximum and minimum, which is a random range in which the Niagara system will be choosing how long will this lighting live for. And by using scale horizontal and scale vertical, we'll be able to adjust how tall or how wide the lighting is. You can also have like super thin lighting so it's less powerful for example or shorter version of the lighting maybe it's just closer to the floor but I really like to keep that uh, kind of thin and kind of tall because it it's kind of more like a zap you know and scale is the overall scale parameter so you can make it half the size or twice the size or super small so it's scaling everything uh, relative to that number globally and uniformly, so it's not going to give any random values, but it's a pretty nice parameter to have and super necessary. And now you have just created your own Zap BFX, which is pretty great. You can drag and drop. Oh, wait, what happened? It hasn't saved, right? It, it looks like those custom Zaps are not being saved, right? That's just because this is just for preview purposes. Now, if you'd want to add that to the Niagara system, you'd have to open the Niagara system and let everything compile and load. Niagara systems can get scary pretty quickly, but don't worry about it. You'll find some orange boxes around, but you have to find the blue one 
and inside the blue one you'll find user parameters so click there and you can now uh, just minimize this window here and it's kind of tedious because you have to do this by hand uh, which is not great but you can uh, copy and paste all the values from here into there so for example the uh, let's adjust the window a bit more so it's easier to see so as you can see lighting background colors are not corresponding to the ones that you've just created so right click the lighting background colors copy and then right click here and paste and yeah you have to do this for all the parameters here but yeah you know unreal has cool stuff but also tedious stuff uh, there's no way to apply this to the actual Nagra system asset without you having to go ahead and do all of this because you're adjusting that in a level basis and not uh, inside the system basis. So yeah, uh, it's kind of tedious, but right now, if we save this, at least the colors will be saved. So if I drag and drop this into the scene, you'll find that the colors are staying like the ones that you just created, which is pretty great. All right, so kind of tedious video to explain how to use such an easy asset. I guess you would be able to know how to use this on your own, obviously, but there's people that are just studying and need some guidance on that. So hopefully that video was useful for them. If there are any suggestions or any questions or any ideas on what you might add to the pack, please feel free to reach out to info at bifx.com or even better, you can join our Discord server in which we'll be responding to you super quickly and the community can also help you out with any of the questions you might have. And also you'll find a bunch of news about what we've been creating, like what are we up to in Bifex and which packs are coming next and all that stuff. So yeah, see you there. Hope you have a really nice rest of the day and see you soon. Bye-bye.